All right, so I'm going to put a timestamp right in front of your screen and in the description as this video is over 30 minutes long. So whatever part you want to watch, go ahead and click to that certain timeline. And if not, sit back, relax and enjoy the whole video. All right, guys, this is your captain, Murky Aviation here and welcome, welcome, welcome to another trip report. And today I'm going to be flying with none other than my home country airline, Aer Lingus. But this time on a different aircraft, different seats and a new location yeah so let's see what aircraft we're gonna be getting for today fingers crossed for this one yes sir yes sir what did i say leave my room you alpha we are about to get it come on yes sir right so as you guys can tell by my celebration today i will be flying on the a321 neo for the very first time i'm excited because i've never been on that aircraft i'm i'm very excited i've never been on it and i want to see what it is like to fly on it so yeah a day prior to my travel i predicted my ride to be this aircraft and this exact registration for my flights hence why i celebrated a couple of seconds ago in this video now I've already flown on a 321 current engine option with three different airlines four times and all of them were powered by the IEV to 500 engines. The only difference with the 321 NEO is that it also has the same engines as the 321 NEO that I flew on recently, which are the CFM Leap 1As as well as the Sharklets. So I'm pretty excited to see what I get on board as well as trying out the new seats as well. So without further ado, Let's get straight into this trip report. All right, so I begin my journey where I enter the Terminal 2 building. And as you guys can see, nothing too crazy going on here in terms of passenger capacity, which is a good thing, especially at 4 a.m. Usually around 9, 10, 12, or maybe in the afternoon or evening, it can get insanely busy or moderately busy because of the amount of passengers going to the United States and other European destinations as well. So yeah, I then stopped and filmed the business class check-in area, which is currently closed. But as you guys can tell by the title and the thumbnail, I'll be flying on business class for the very first time, which will be exciting for me. So yeah, without further ado, because I don't have anything to offer for the belt, it's time for me to grab my ticket from the ticket desk and head off to airside through security. I'm going to be going through security by using a different lane. So instead of me using the normal lane, I'm going to be using fast track, which was included in my ticket. So this is going to be my first time trying out this lane as it only takes around five minutes to get me through. I arrived at airside as I walked past the Starbucks coffee area. And because I've only two hours before my flight, I've decided to head off to the very end of the 400 gates to do some plane spotting. While I do that, I have some very exciting news to tell you guys about Aer Lingus regarding their routes. A couple of days ago, Aer Lingus has announced that they will be expanding their transatlantic network to two destinations. Starting on the 17th of May 2024, they will launch their four times weekly direct service from Dublin to Denver. This is going to be a blessing to Aer Lingus and its US passengers who live in Denver and its Irish passengers who have families in Denver as well. So instead of just flying on United Airlines, you know, you have Aer Lingus who will take you direct to Denver as another option as well. So yeah, I mean, I'm proud that Aer Lingus are now flying to Denver and maybe next year, you never know, my first US destination could be that city as well. So yeah also on the 29th of april they will be resuming their dublin to minneapolis route after five years finally after five years you know since 2019 they were flying the 757 200s there and from there on they retired those aircrafts for the a321 neo that was supposed to be flying to minneapolis but instead covid decided to say no to those routes and that's when you know the story happened where the lockdown occurred and you see a couple of routes flying as well. So, I mean, yeah, it was kind of tough, you know, for, you know, Aer Lingus to bring back those routes. And it, it's a long time coming. Honestly, it has been a long time coming. Now, for their aircraft type, they're going to be taking both their Airbus A330s to those two destinations. Now, for the Minneapolis route, I was hoping that they'll take the A321neo. But they said that they're going to be taking the A321 XLR, which won't be happening in, I'd say, 2025, 2026, because right now the aircraft has a couple of problems and has yet to be certified as well. So, yeah, after spotting some planes, it is time for me to head over to the lounge. 
But before I did that, I wanted to show you an Aer Lingus A320 that might be my potential ride home from Munich, which will be Echo India Delta Echo India or Saint Cornelius. As you can see here, it is worn on the Green Spirit livery, which is my favorite livery in the Aer Lingus fleet. There used to be Delta Echo Oscar or Saint Sebastian on the same livery, but it was later repainted under new livery, which is unfortunate. But anyways, let's over to the lounge. Entering the lounge, you can see a couple of passengers chilling at the area along with a variety of seats that you can choose to sit at. You can also get some views outside the ramp whilst enjoying your time at the lounge. Now I wasn't really able to record much as there was too many passengers in my way which is so annoying but there was literally nothing I can do about that. The only thing I can say about the lounge that is as underwhelming as the current livery is their food options which are pretty limited. I've seen other aviation YouTubers record their different lounge experiences on different airlines and I've seen that they have hot food like eggs, bacon, sausages, pretty much varieties of bread but with this one it's pretty much a disappointment as you guys can clearly see. Um, I didn't really record much again passengers were just getting in my way but yeah it's not looking good i had secured myself a nice seat from upstairs and here's what i got here which is two slices of soda bread with two butters and corn flakes while i was watching idris elba's hijack i watched passengers deboard the a330 from jfk through the air stairs as the air bridge didn't work remember that one door that was completely ripped off of american 787 that was caused by one of those jet bridges a month ago here I got seconds by dishing myself with three tiny croissants and an iced up OJ. Here you can see my ride which is 12 minutes into landing at the airport after a six and a half hour journey from Newark Liberty. Eight minutes later, my ride has finally arrived and let's see if this aircraft comes button. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. I also filmed a shot of Luftijet's A321neo heading back to its home Frankfurt. This gives me an idea on what I'll be expecting to see when I land at Munich airport which is the second home to the airline. A couple of minutes later my ride has finally arrived. The registration is Echo India Lima Romeo Alpha. A four-year-old A321neo long range who had his first flight on the 20th of July 2019 and was delivered to the airline on the 26th which was coincidentally the same day of my travel and filming. The saint name for this aircraft is Saint Rowan or Neev Ruwan. This was Aer Lingus' very first A321neo that joined the fleet and was the same plane that flew the first inaugural flight to Cleveland back a couple of months ago which was the reason why I celebrated at the very start of the video while another reason I mean it's because I like Cleveland Cavaliers it's pretty much a basketball team there but yeah that's the reason why I celebrated with LRA being the airline's first A321neo they currently have seven more of these examples in their fleet you would see this plane flying to North America and a few cities in Europe from both Dublin and Shannon now that the plane is parked up at the stand at full stop, let me give you guys a quick tour of the lounge before I leave there and get some nice views and say some hellos to it. Viewing from the top view, you can see the layout from below. Then one of the pod seats facing the ramp outside the window, along with more seats to chill at. Two showers. A galley where you can grab some coffee, beverages which are in the fridge and a bowl of biscuits which I've already collected a few before I left the lounge for my flights. Heading on downstairs and here is a shot of their Model A330 on the stand. Along with the departures board showing only Aer Lingus departures. Here you can see at the very bottom of the screen my 710 departure with the flight number of EI352 heading off to Flughafen München in Deutschland. 
Rip your ears. I'm sorry I had to do this because that's how Germans be speaking. Anyways, let's get the heck out of here and just see the plane. Now, this is going to be my first time heading off to Munich, which is my second German destination after Frankfurt back in 2012. And I hope to go back to Frankfurt next year to see what the airport is all about nowadays. So, yeah, um, I've booked an airside tour for not for Frankfurt, but just for Munich at 12 euros. So I'm excited to see what the the air side and land side experience is all about as well so yeah um stay tuned for the next video as i will be uploading that soon so that will be next week anyways if you guys have gotten this far because the next part will be me entering the aircraft like this video Reiner, slam that subscribe button hit the notification bell if you guys will be notified to more of my uploads and as well as that follow me on instagram murky aviation yt share because not much is going on on this channel and I really want to get this channel popping, you know. So do me that favor and share it to your brothers, your sisters, whoever. Here we have arrived at gate 307 and this is what my aircraft looks like. Wait, hold on. There we go. This is what my aircraft looks like when I'm parked up at the stand, currently loading and chilling at the stand, which is the same stand that I use for my flight to Manchester and one of Aer Lingus's A320s being Echo India Delta Echo Kilo. His name is Saint Unan or Niev Unan. And as you guys can see, this plane is currently towing in to one of the gates beside my flights heading off to Lyon as EI 550. Right, so it is time for me to board my flight. The boarding process began by starting off with air club and or priority passengers and then the non-priority passengers after. I happen to be one of the first few boarding the aircraft as I have priority included in my tickets. Welcome aboard in the A321 long range cabin and here's what the seats look like. The 2-2 configuration on the even and the 1-1 configuration on the odd side. So my seat for today will be 5 Alpha which will be the throne seat for my flight to Munich. Beneath the IFB screen you have the storage compartment. Beside me you have a safety card and a vomit bag. Another storage compartment to store your belongings in. A tray table which can only be brought out by physically pulling out the toggle. Beside me you got two seat controls as this is a life flat seat. Along with a USB port and a plug outlet beside it. An adjustable reading light where you have buttons to press for your preferred setting. Co hook to hang up your coats and an IV screen which is currently unresponsive on the ground but when airborne we'll take a look at it when it's active. And if you don't want to touch or swipe the IV screen you got a remote control beside it as well. Here's a safety card currently in a clean condition especially when you open it and close it on the other side. This safety card is only used to get yourself prepared for an emergency which god forbid is not gonna happen here's what it looks like when i'm just normally sitting down on the seat i can easily stretch out as there is no restrictive leg room which is good on this business class seat so yeah that's pretty much it from the seat tour i hope you guys enjoy it i actually like the seats it has a lot more storage hence why i picked 5a although there was a storage compartment located beside my left leg which I didn't record, but that's minor. I don't think it really needs to get its own camera time anyway. So yeah, right now I'm gonna send you over to the captain who will give you the rundown on how that flight went. Gentlemen, a very good morning from the flight deck. It's the captain speaking, Matt Quidlin is my name. Joined on the flight deck this morning by Senior First Officer, Philip Kushner. In the cabin looking after your care and safety, we have uh, Dave with his team of Vincent, Mark and Emma. I'll begin with an apology for the uh, delayed departure this morning. That's as a result of an air traffic control slot that we're experiencing in UK airspace. We should be underway hopefully in about the next five minutes or so. Once we get going, we have a taxi time this morning of approximately 20 minutes to the north runway here in Dublin. Taking off then to the west, out to the east ultimately then with the turn and uh, climbing up to our cruising altitude of about uh, 33,000 feet. Conditions en route, generally smooth. Uh, some pockets of light turbulence this morning and there are some showers in the vicinity of um, Munich. 
Philip is flying over. This morning he'll update you in the cruise on the expected time of arrival and the latest weather conditions at that time. I'll leave you now in the safe hands of Dave and his team in the cabin. Okay, so the plane has just begun its pushback out the gates, which means I'm going to let you guys indulge on the CFM Leap Engine Starsop once again. The cinematics and my very first departure out of the North Runway 28 ride, which involves an instant right hand bank turn. So, anyways, I'll see you lot in the air. Take care. Just for those of you with larger pieces of electronic equipment, if, like laptops, please refrain from using them for takeoff, approach, and landing, and switch them off now and install them securely. Also, if you notice any damage, smoke, or flames, or a device you have with you falls behind the structure of your seat, contact a crew member straight away. You also know this is an in-flight entertainment system available for takeoff and landing. If you wish, please refrain though from using it during the safety demonstration, which will be taking place shortly. So we're very pleased to see you on board. We do hope you enjoy your flight, and we'd just like your attention to the front of each cabin while the safety features of the Airbus A321 are shown to you. Clear eight emergency exits, all of which are clearly marked by green exit signs. Floor factory lighting will guide you to the exits in poor visibility. There are two doors at the front of the cabin, one left, one right. Two doors at the back of the cabin, one left and one right. And in the centre of the cabin at rows 14 and 15, there are four overwing exits, two on the left and two on the right. All exits must be cleared during takeoff and landing. Please take time to locate the exit nearest to you, bearing in mind that the nearest usable exit may be behind you. Should you need to use one of these exits in an emergency, leave all cabin baggage behind and make your way to the nearest exit. There's a left jack in the package. Welcome back and here we are at the Infla Entertainment System which is currently active as you guys can see and here's what we got right in front of us. So we start off with the movie section, pretty much nothing special and then we head off to the TV selection again. There's a few things you can watch, few episodes, you know limited episodes or you could just watch the comedy section if you want to, you know what I mean? There's a variety of them as well so 
yeah we then move over to the audio section no hip-hop no michael jackson no oh. nothing no drill and gang. just podcasts or whatever music you want to listen to moving on to the game section we did have a few games to play i mean i did play cool and didn't really show you the video but listen we charge Hello. moving on to the information area you can see some more information about what airlink this is really all about and yeah beside it there's an in-flight map which gives out the information on where this plane is currently at all right so that's pretty much it from the in-flight entertainment side there really isn't much going on there so if you want more you're gonna have to download the Aer Lingus play app which was literally on the screen right in front of me but i didn't have the app prepared for me which i'm going to be doing right now as there is wi-fi on board there's supposed to be a pop-up which didn't even come up so it just says no connection in orange so yeah i had to get the cabin crew to help me with that and as i got the cabin crew to help me with it here's the wi-fi options as you guys can see so from chat for an hour at 349 all the way down to don't miss a thing at 20 euro 49 which i honestly think is a very good pricing from the airline i was provided with a bar of kitkat and a cup of coffee as well as a pair of headphones. With the Wi-Fi working and all paid up, it is time for me to go on Flight Radio 24 and find my flight. And as you can see here, we're just about to fly over Rotterdam The Hague in the Netherlands which I couldn't find outside as the clouds were literally covering them all right so let's do a quick comfort test on this seat and as you guys can see it is well padded and good to go for a nice nap and here's what the remote controller looks like as you guys can see at the back you have the keyboard and then at the front you got the control pad so now time to put away the controller and get straight into the life flight. this life flight comes in three different modes and other features there's the upright mode the relaxed mode and the sleep mode you have other features like the massage and mood lights which is the reading light yo what's up with them ashy elbows fam are you sick are you pregnant who's it gonna be a boy or a girl or are you turning white like Michael Jackson? No, I just forgot to cream my elbows. That's it. You just forgot to cream your elbows before I even got onto the plane, right? Bro, you're 21 years of age. A grown man with bien bien. And you're there telling me you forgot to cream your hands. No excuses. There's women watching, you know. Women are watching this video. They want to see if you have been taking care of yourself and clearly you haven't. Women, don't look at him. Look the other direction. All right, so as you guys can see, I am fully life flat. And here's another angle of the life flat situation I'm in. <clears throat> and yeah, um, the leg room is restrictive as expected, which honestly, if I was to ever stretch out on a transatlantic flight, I would feel uncomfortable. So anyways, let's readjust the climb up to relaxing mode and see what it looks like. Here's what the relaxed mode looks like, as you guys can see. Still got some nice legroom going on there, so yeah. Here I serve myself some shorty biscuits, which I've taken from the lounge earlier, along with a nice coffee to wash it down. Here I am at the back of the cabin at economy class with a 3-3 configuration on those seats and as you guys can tell here is a clear difference 
with the in-flight entertainment screens in terms of size without the remote as well so yeah all right so it's time for me to head back up to my seat now So now that we are currently in Germany, passing Frankfurt, it is time for me to do one more thing. Say it with me. The Lou review. And we enter the bathroom with a welcome stench. Someone did a muzzle on that toilet. Yes, they certainly did. But anyways, let's just take a look at what the bathroom looks like. It's pretty much the same thing as the A320 Neo. It's all tight and dope. Um, just going around the room. Um, nothing really much going on here. You got a sink which pretty much works as well as some soaps and yeah and up above you got the air vents which is pretty much different to the a320 neo as well all right so that wraps up my in-flight experience at business class as the plane is on its descent down to munich so i'll let you guys go with the cinematic and after my first touchdown to the airport i'll talk business on my whole experience And here we have it, ladies and gentlemen, oder meine Damen und Herren. Willkommen, willkommen, willkommen am Flughafen München, Franz Josef Strauss, mit einer Flugzeit von einer Stunde und 50 Minuten. This is the airport home to Lufthansa and its Airbus A340-600, Airbus A380-800 and my all-time favorite aircraft being its A350-900s. With the taxi time being less than five minutes, let me give you guys a quick conclusion on how I got on with this experience. In terms of ground experience, it was meh. Even though there were plenty of seats to sit at, there weren't too many food options to choose from, which was kind of a letdown. The onboard experience was good, especially with the hard product I tried out during this two hour flight. There was a lot of storage to put all your belongings in, except for my bag, which I had to put it up 
on the overhead lockers before and during my flight which was completely fine. The life flat was great but less roomy in terms of legroom. The in-flight entertainment was pretty decent although there really isn't anything going on in terms of movies and music to pick. Even though you have the Aer Lingus Play app to um, use for more movies to watch on that in-flight entertainment screen so I mean you also got a backup there hence why it's called redundancy. My flight experience on this A321neo however meh I think there's other aircrafts I can fly on I'm joking it's such a fantastic aircraft to fly on I'm not gonna lie to you I mean this aircraft really can do so much wonders in the skies and I'm just happy seeing many more airlines order and deliver their own planes and even liaise them and yeah this aircraft is just like flying another a320 you get off the plane you feel buzzed and pretty much nothing special but yeah um with this a321 neo it's a very special plane as it was my first time flying on it even though it has the same cfm leap engines as the 320 neo and the same body as the a321 current engine option i would love to experience flying of this aircraft again transatlantic maybe with JetBlue or even with play play hey hey or my home country airline Aer Lingus again so yeah maybe in the near future like I said might fly the plane again see what it's like and yeah overall I'm gonna rate this a 7.5 out of 10. We then pass by the expansion of Terminal 1 which will be expected to open at the end of 2025 which is two years from now. As our plane parks beside the Etihad 787-10 is that a dash 10 or a dash 9? It's a dash 9. It's a dash 10. Don't mind him. We will get off the aircraft. But before I did that, let me go have a nice combo with the pilots and show you the nice footage that I've taken the off the top. Okay. Alright, so it's time for me to get off this plane and say my goodbyes for today. If you've enjoyed this 30 minute video, please do not forget to like it, Reiner, slam that subscribe button, hit the notification bell if you guys want to be notified and stay tuned because I will be making another video in Munich where I'll be doing an airside bus tour. Anyways, keep the dirty side down, the blue side up, see you later.